So now that we know what sequences are, you've got a, a pattern and you're restating it several times in a row and every time you restate it you're moving by a particular generic interval. Okay, so now that we got that basic definition down, let's talk about how you're going to label them. There'll be three parts to a label. The first thing is going to say, how are you moving that pattern? What generic interval are you moving by for every restatement of it? In what direction? Um, let me give you an example of on the sheet here. Interval of restatement is going to be the first thing. Now here's a, a piece by Chopin, Mazurka in F major, Op. 68, number 3. Um, you can just scan the score and see where the opening comes back again. And that's pretty easy. You're, you're getting that same dotted rhythm here. Okay, so the pattern is two measures long. Let me just box that up so we've got it. This is the pattern. And then we're restating it at a new pitch level here. Just that much tells us we have a sequence. We can go a little further and see that this, too, is matching the original. It's going to start to diverge here. That So far, so good. But see when you add an extra note here at the end to get that B flat? You've changed the pattern. Also in the bass, See how this dotted rhythm happens there? So sometimes I'll do something like this. And so, oh, it's breaking off here. And it looks like it's continuing here, but actually it's breaking off. So we really have two statements. And the third one already, by the end of it, starts to diverge from the pattern. All right, so we have a pattern replicated. And we have an interval of restatement. In other words, we move here and we move here by a certain generic interval. You can look at the melody, you can look at the bass, either one, because the whole business, everything in that box moves down to form the second statement. So let's trace the melody. So we started on a C, and we moved down a third. And with the sequence, we'll continue to move by thirds. So sure enough, there we go. The sequence continues. We go down by three, and we go down by three. So the first part of my label is going to be down by three. Remember, it's a generic interval. That's the first part of our label. There will be three components to our label. The next thing, we'll always put in parentheses, and we'll say the root motion. Well, how many kinds of root motion? We'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, you'll need to trace the root motion from the first chord to the second, and it's handy to know that every time you have a, a pattern in the main kinds of sequences, uh, you know, the majority of the sequences, they're going to have two different chords inside that pattern. So you're really looking, once you know what the pattern is, you're looking for the two chords that, that make up that pattern. Here we've got F major, so let me write the roots out here. F here, and then C for this measure. And I don't need to look further. I, I can just go at it with the assumption that I've got two chords within that statement. Okay, then we get another statement, and what we're going to do is say, how do I move within the box, within the pattern, and how do I get from that last root of the pattern to the first root in the next statement? Here we've moved to D minor, so I'm just going to write D. You can write the minor on there if you like. But we're tracing the root motion. Now as soon as you tell me how I move within the pattern and how I move from the last part of that pattern to the next one, it's just going to repeat from then on. If I know what this root motion is, I know what this root motion is going to be as well. Now I can't just tell you how to move within the box. I also need to tell you how to get to the next thing or haven't give you, I haven't given you enough root motion to be able to reconstruct the whole business. But I hope you can see that if I just give you three roots and how to get between them, I'm good. So that's what we'll do. We'll show how to get from this root to that. Uh, by convention, we go down four. But be aware that down four equals up by five. Uh, this particular descending third sequence, we don't write this even if the motion had literally been up a fifth. Uh, 
we will always go down a fourth for this one. So get used to that. And then C to D, that's up a step. Generally speaking, unless you're dealing with a, a couple of particular sequences, we'll get to these in a minute, but unless you're dealing with these two, so scratch those, but all others, you take the small interval. So if I've got a choice between this and this, I'll choose descending fourth because the fourth is a smaller number than the five. Here, it's true I could go, I could get the same root motion I could get from C to D by going a seventh down, up two equals down seven. But I prefer you to use that because it's a smaller number. Okay, so first thing, interval of restatement. How do I get from pattern statement to pattern statement? In other words, from box to box. Number two, how do I get from the first to the second root, that's this number, down four, and then how do I get from that last root to the first root of the next statement, and that's the two there, up by two. One last thing, there are different uh, versions of this same sequence. If I just stop there, uh, I've not got the whole picture. Let me give you an example of the keyboard real quick. So if we do, notice that I'm playing the roots of this sequence we're just talking about. Down by fourth, up by step, down by fourth, up a step, and so on. You might recognize the Paco Bell Cannon bass line here. That's the, the famous one. That's where I'm starting with it. Now I'm going to change the bass but keep the root motion. recognizably similar but I've smoothed over the over the bass line. It was pretty jagged. Leap, step, leap, step, and now it's just stepwise. How do we get the stepwise bass line? Well that was our first root. I started on C. Go down a fourth. But now instead of going down a, a fourth in the bass, I need that root, but I'm gonna replace the root with the chordal third. So now what was a fourth down becomes just a step down. And then we do it again, we replicate. So this becomes this. Very smooth. Okay, so we've got two sequences that are very closely related. They're essentially the same in terms of the root motion and the way the sequence moves, but the bass is different. And because of inversion, so our last thing that we're going to do is we're going to note the presence of any inverted chords using the figures. And this one was a root position. Some people like to write root position. And then if we had, you just put a comma there. Uh, if we had any inversion, we'd, we'd make a note of it. Uh, some people write alternating. Six threes. Now that makes it real clear what's going on. This isn't that every chord is a six three. Uh, so it says you alternate root position with six three position chords. In other words, first inversion chords. Now, it's always going to alternate like that. So I can just write 6-3, and then on that rare occasion when everything's inverted, because that, that could happen, you can write two of them and we know. So I'm all for laziness. If you can get by with keeping it uh, short and sweet, do it. And then, so that 6-3 is a lot easier than having to write alternating all the time. This will do. Some textbooks uh, do this, teach it that way. Now if you need a quick review of all this, it's on this sequence handout uh, called Sequences from Unit 3. You need three parts to complete to, to creating a complete label. Identify the repeated pattern and then provide one, this is your first part, the interval of restatement, the interval between one statement of the pattern and the next. Remember that you can trace that by just looking at melodic notes or you can look at bass notes for it. Either one will work. Number two, provide the root motion from chord to chord. And we're just going two root motions. That's, that does it. That's all you need. Number three, 
Note the presence of any inverted chords using figures. And that's what we've done here. I, I often leave it blank instead of writing root position in there. Because as a default, it's, you're just going to take it as being all root position. Uh, kind of like figures themselves. If there's nothing there, you assume it's all root position. If you have a 6-3, then you know it's every other chord is a 6-3 is a position chord. The, the net result of doing inversion can be seen here in this other example. So this is an example of the, of the descending thirds uh, down five, uh, down four up five, ugh, send wrong thing. this one, down four up two. But this time with the six three variant. So this is the straight up, this one. And now below we've got down four up two, six three down here. Look what that does to the bass. It's the same key, it's F. The pattern is not spanning measures now, but it's contained within a, an individual measure. So you can see this pattern replicated here. The third, the third. You can see the, can in, the um, accompanimental pattern repeated here. So let me box it as we did on the previous one. And then a replica of it. And not quite, okay, so it diverges there. We have two and a little bit. Yeah, yeah this breaks off. See how that did not happen before. So we'll just show it trailing off here. Two full statements of the pattern. Okay, now the roots, F, and this is C. C, E, G, there's another C, but E is in the base, and that inversion is why we need to do it here. Well, that's why we need to write 6, 3 in this spot. Root position, 6, 3, root position, 6, 3. You can verify that. This is an A chord, A minor chord, but it's in first inversion. You don't really have to bother with this because it's the same pattern replicated. Whatever this did, this will do as well, just down a third. So here's the down a third, the root motion, down a fourth, up a second, and then we add six three. It's kind of neat that these are both in the same key and very different sound to them because they're different content. The pattern is different, of course, but the root motion is exactly the same and uses exactly the same uh, actual roots, so F, F, C, C, and so on. The, the main difference here is that you've got that 6-3, and that's why we, we record that as something significant. We include it in part in the label. All right, so there is uh, an example of how to label it, but we've also got a chance here to learn about one of the, the four main kinds of sequences. Um, this is descending thirds by descending a fourth and going up a step. As a shorthand, we'll just call it descending thirds. And let, I'm gonna give you now a quick overview of all the labels. This has been one example. Uh, let's take a look at some, at the whole set of labels that we'll need to use.